One of the biggest national stories this first week of the year hits right home in South Florida. The decades old unsolved border and immigration crisis that blew up again this week as numbers of crossings surge again as election year campaigning ramps up demands for border security could stall emergency funding for Ukraine and Israel. A House committee prepares to impeach the Homeland Security Secretary for breach of duty. And the latest lawmaker visit to the border included 64 House Republicans and the Speaker demanding the kind of strict hardline policies and mass deportations that Democrats and anti-immigrant call anti-immigrant and the president promised to veto. In the middle of all this, a detailed bipartisan bill that addresses border security and a plan for those undocumented living, working, paying taxes here for years. It's called the Dignity Act, and it's filed for the second time by Congresswoman Maria Salazar, Republican from Miami and a Democrat co-sponsor from El Paso. Welcome to the program, Maria Salazar. Great to have you. Of course, wonderful to be with you, Glenna. Happy New Year to you. Is I guess it's still not too late to yeah. say that. I want to talk about nope. the Dignity Act in the context yeah. now, though. Um, this this context this week that we're in right now, it is a yeah. national security plan. It is an immigrant advocate plan. It has everything that everyone is asking for. Why isn't it moving? Oh my God! What a great question, and what a mess we're in. Well, because I think both parties need to understand that they have to come to the table. We are in a divided, very divided government, and you need a bipartisan solution if we're going to solve what everyone knows by now. It's the number one crisis we're facing in this country. And a lot of talk, a lot of talk. You know, there are no saints in Washington. A lot of talks from both parties, but I'm the only one who has presented a coherent solution, a bipartisan one, like you said, it's called the Dignity Act. And it does two things, basically two things. It seals the border because we cannot have the mess that we're saying. Six million illegals since President Biden arrived in the White House. Number one, seals the border. Number two, it looks bad and it looks back and it gives dignity, not amnesty, not citizenship to those people who have been here for more than five years working, paying taxes and contributing to our economy. That's it. What are we going to do with the illegals? Let's give them dignity. You know, I watched the, uh, you're on the Foreign Affairs Committee, the House. I watched a recent committee meeting where you were quizzing yep. some immigration experts on what sounded like some of the ideas that you might want to put forth. And one of those things, you know, I want to address, this is such a, to your point, such a complicated, moving a lot of parts to immigration and to the border. But it specifically um, focused on what a lot of people call catch and release. People who are asylum seekers who are paroled into the country uh, and, and have to wait years with sort of in limbo for any kind of... Um, yeah, but we solved that. Right. We solved so, it. So you know how? It, with you, you, humanitarian campuses. That's what I wanted to because ask you about, of, because you mentioned me. these humanitarian centers. Campuses. And, and yeah, I want to air sort of that idea because it, it sounded like, you know, the experts that you were talking about or talking to were kind of hedging. Yeah, it's a great idea, but, um, and I'm, I'm guessing they're thinking of bureaucracy and politics, but flesh that out for us. What does that practically look like? Sure. Glenna, the problem that we have is that the asylum system is game being gamed because there is no other way to come into the country except unless you wait years because the legal immigration system is also broken. But now let's go to what you're telling me. So if you come to the United States and you're a Pepe Perez and you say that I am claiming asylum, the laws in the United States give you due process. We're going to give you the due process in 60 days. You are welcomed into five humanitarian centers along the border, two thousand miles you go into five and then you can stay there for 60 days with your family we're not going to be dividing anybody you get mental health you get all types of services and in 60 days a judge has to adjudicate and says and, and determine if you're going to be able to be welcomed into the country with, with an asylum granted asylum or you have to go back home no one disappears into the country and has to wait nine years for the first court appearance it's over catch and release is over and the asylum system is not going to be gained anymore and that's part of the larger picture is because the immigration system right now is 
literally crumbling under the numbers of people who are in the system as we speak. So you've got what's happening now. You've got border security. Democrats say the border is secure. We have seen that is absolutely not the case. Republicans are saying the border is wide open, respectfully. That is not the case. But there actually is a border security problem that we're seeing flesh out as people are there's, you know, the drugs and the cartels that a lot of people point to, which is, is a minuscule but very dangerous component of border crossers, traffickers, uh, potential terrorists. So I want to I want to take a look at the security portion of this. And the president okay. this week looked kind of over his shoulder as, as reporters were asking questions and, and said, I just need the funding for the border. Um, so it is in this kind of partisan ping pong. The funding for the border is being hashed out right now between senators and the administration. But in the Dignity Act that that I'm, I'm hoping, I, we don't do advocacy journalism here, but if you read that act, that certainly seems to Good. be a start to, to a lot of problems. Take us through wow. what that- Wow, thank you. Thank you for that plug. Thanks. What the component <laughs> is. Well, I'm gonna challenge you on some of them too, but we'll take us through the component of how to secure the border, period, the end, non-porously. Hey, listen, the technology is out there. I have interviewed some of those folks that own companies in the private sector, that they have come up with technology. I'm not an expert, but I do know that we need drones. The drones are there. We need towers, long, long, tall towers with infrared cameras. I'm not an expert, I know it's there. We need levees, we need structures. It doesn't matter. The technology is out there. The private sector has provided. The only thing we need to do as elected officials is buy them and install it and political willingness to do that. Like the Israelis do. I mean, it's not—it's nothing, it's nothing out of the ordinary. So we steal the border and in those ports of entry that we need to uh, keep open, of course, for trade and for those who are wanna come in, then we have the humanitarian centers and we increase and we pay better border patrol, border security. It, this is not rocket science, it's just political willingness. And the, the problem is that the Republicans want to do that, which I know that we need to seal the border, which is what HR2, which is the only law that has passed, is border security. But then the Dems say, no, 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 not only border security, we need something else, which is dignity. Of course, let's give dignity to those who have been here, around 10 million illegals who are undocumented, who have helped the economy, have American children, want to go home for Christmas or bury their mom, uh, be able to pay taxes, no government funding, no government help. You pay for your own health insurance. On top of that, you pay $1,000 a year, and then you are in the dignity status. What do you think about that? And well, and it that's, you know, I can't answer that at the moment, but that is actually what a lot of what we've heard reporting is a lot of uh, businesses, a lot of agricultural entities, a lot of small businesses um, are, are advocating for the work construction, right? Advocating for the workforce. I, I want to talk about HR2 a, a little more deeply too in our next segment. But sure. um, so I, let's do that. Let's take a break, a commercial break. HR2, to your point, has passed the House. You want uh, me to stay longer? Yes, hey, I do. Is I that okay? I thought had enough. Oh, six, seven <laughs> okay, more minutes. Sure. Is that good? Okay. Stay tuned. We hey, will be. make it 14. <laughs> I love to be talking to my people in Miami. Remember that I, I used to do this and I miss it. Uh, do you? <laughs> All right. Well, hey. Hey, we can talk about that one day. <laughs> All right, stay tuned. We will be right back with the Congresswoman in a couple of minutes. We are back with Miami oh, Congresswoman Maria Salazar. You're on camera, back on camera where you used to be. <laughs> um, so I want to, Congresswoman, you mentioned HR2. Uh, that is the, the speaker actually at the border brought that up. That is uh, something yeah. he's very much behind. That was a bill that passed with complete Republican support, zero Democrats. Yeah. It is a border security bill. Uh, yeah. And also, in context, it's the kind of hardline bill that brings back some of the Trump-era components to immigration uh, that some immigration advocates call cruel. Um, it does things, more restrictions on people seeking asylums, more deportations. Uh, you voted for that. 
along with sponsoring what is a much more bipartisan, comprehensive bill, weigh, weigh in on the differences between what you voted for in H.R. 2 and what you think might be a more bipartisan compromise that could pass the Senate? That's a great question. H.R. 2 is the, it's the um, border security produced by the Republican House of Representatives. And basically what it says is that you cannot be gaming the system anymore. You meaning whomever wants to come in and does not have a, a legal status or a real claim for asylum. You, you need, in order for you to come to the United States, you need to have a, a real true case for asylum. And HR2, what it does is that it basically seals the border. It just creates order of the border. And that is fine because everyone, including the Hispanic community, we don't want to see six million illegals. God knows who those people are. Well, I let me let me just are. let me just clarify this six million border crossings, an eye popping number and an absolutely an unprecedented record. Unacceptable. But but, but the ba vast majority of those were not illegals. They were people seeking asylum, which is completely legal to do. And I just wanted to clarify that. And that's correct. But the problem is that out of the one, uh, chances are that only 20 or 30 percent of those people who came in and claimed for asylum have merits. And we know that. That's why most of them do not go back to, uh, to uh, the court system. They don't show up in their court day. You know, that's why we have probably 10, 12 million undocumented whom I would like to give dignity to. So basically, going back to H.R. 2, H.R. 2 is a very good bill. It could be tweaked here and there, but it misses or it lacks what the Dems want, which is the dignity part. Let's talk to the DACA, to the Dreamers, to the people who have TPS, to those people who have been here, and we will not have food by Friday if they are not on our fields or in construction or in agriculture or in farming or in dairies or in roofing. You know, that the problem is with the dignity bill is that my bill is not only an immigration reform, it's a national security because it seals the border. And on top of that, it's a it's an economic bill because you know very well that the business sector, that's why dignity has been sponsored by the United States Chamber of Commerce. Because yeah. you have the private sector say, Hey, I need hands, I need hands, yeah. please, where do I and then we cannot grow as a country and continue being the most important country, economically speaking, in the world if we don't have growth. And we can do, if you don't have hands, we don't have growth. Yeah, I mean, so I those think hands everybody are already also bipartisan is that. yeah, and everybody is behind legal immigration. That's that's a bipartisan thing too. So let me ask you something that um, you know may be difficult to answer. With with all of this said, because this is an election year and immigration and border security are absolutely partisan flashpoints. Do you yeah. think that people don't want to solve this at all this year so they can use it for their campaign? Is that too harsh? Well, you know, look, I'm going to go back 30 years ago, and I always, you know that I'm very critical of the Democratic Party because the Democrats have been always announcing that they are the minority party. And they have been promising people like in my, in people in my minority a community, the Hispanics, that we're going to have an immigration reform law if you vote for me. And that happened with Obama and that happened with Biden. So I think it's time for the GOP to step up and say, you know what, guys, we're going to solve the problem. And that's why me, Maria Salazar, proud representative of District 27, 78 percent of my district is Hispanic American. So why don't we do something and fix the problem? Let's stop talking. So we let's have do something. We have a 2.0 on the table. This is the second iteration of the Dignity Act. Two years ago, next month, almost exactly two years ago, um, you filed the first version. It was referred to 12 committees. It never got a hearing. Fast forward, now we have 2.0. It's referred to the same 12 committees. It is yet to be scheduled for a hearing. How yep. are you gonna maneuver this? Because I have a, this time around, I have a co-sponsor. As I said at the beginning, if we are in a very divided government, you need a bipartisan bill in order to solve anything. And I do have a co-sponsor, Veronica Escobar, who is a liberal, Mexican-American from El Paso, Texas.
So very far away from my position in Miami, conservative Republican or Republican. But we have become very good friends because we're both American. And we want to solve the problem. And she understood for the first time that her party, the Democrats, need to agree that we have to seal the border. And we, the Republicans, need to understand that we got to give dignity to those who are here, who have been here for 10 or 15 or 30 years, and give them dignity so they can come out of the shadows, work the business, work and help the business sector, become hands, continue picking the jalapeno peppers or the tomatoes or the oranges. And then we're going to have, not only are we going to fix it, Social Security, because all those people will start contributing legally to Social Security. We're going to have more taxes in the Treasury, and we will know everyone who lives in the United States. No wow, one this, will be in the shadows. This, this sounds like a story waiting to be written. We'll do Social Security maybe in another segment at another point. Uh, Maria Salazar, yeah, Congresswoman you from have Miami. Ten more, yeah. <laughs> 10 more million people contributing to Social Security. What do you think is going to do that to that fund? So listen, we're going to watch, we're watching this bill, and it would be great to have Immigration Thanks, and Border Security this session really solved in our lifetime and uh, please yes. do keep in touch of course may the lord guide us and thank you and long live the united states and thank you for the opportunity of course thanks